Yeah, our next topic. Basically, what we're going to get into is this whole question about do we need a second rugby league franchise in this country? You. Uh, I think we could do with a, another one. I think there's, a, there's enough player base to, to support it. Uh, my, my only uh, fear for another sports franchise in New Zealand is that we can't afford to have one. We've, we've got so many rugby, uh, super rugby franchises. We've got uh, netball, we've got basketball, we've got soccer. Um, to throw another one in the, in the mix, I don't think we, we could really, really afford it. But as far as having one, there'd be enough support from, from people and, and from players. I'd be frightened that it would weaken the Warriors. Oh, it would. Uh, I don't think there's any doubt about that, but I wouldn't start from that point of view. I'd go down the line that um, Hugh says. I don't think... It, it costs a lot of money to run the Warriors. Um, and it's taken the Warriors a long while to get themselves into a reasonable position financially. And it's only now that they're starting to get gates that they need. And, you know, New Zealand crowds are quite fickle. Yep. You know, uh, we even see it in rugby, uh, see it in all our sports that, you know, if things aren't going right, crowds don't turn, it, turn up. And if you don't get crowds, you don't make money. I, I just don't think there's the money in New Zealand to sustain a second franchise. Well, Whether there's the talent, yeah, there's a lot of talent. Whether there's enough talent to have two teams, I wouldn't know about that, I think. But league's in great shape. I think the Warriors are doing a great job for league. Um, I think you could weaken the Warriors if you brought another team in, and I do think another team would struggle for a long while to get credibility financially. Pricey, the, the reason it became a talkback topic, and it was a big one for a couple of weeks, was because Owen Glenn raised it, and uh, I, I think that he's an interesting guy and that he's able to always attract a lot of publicity when he says something, and he's sort of got the bucks uh, behind him as well. But that's why it became a topic. What's your take on it all? Yeah, I think you'd have to have someone like an Owen Glenn to back a friend, or as you were saying, it's the financial side of things. Here he is there. Um, the talent, I think the talent is in New Zealand to have another team. I think it's going to be strategic from the NRL on exactly what they do with the, the whole expansion thing because you know, I was a part of a competition that was 20 teams and there just wasn't enough first grade talent around. Um, now we've gone, you know, we went down, we're back up to 16 now. If you go two more teams, where do you have it? You know, you say, well, you go to Perth, and that makes it more of a, a, a proper competition in Australia, being, you know, across all of Australia. Um, Brisbane are screaming for another team, and you see all of the sports that are played in Queensland, they're selling out or close to it every stadium, um, no matter what sport it is. So, uh, Central Coast have been screaming for a team for years, but I'm not sure whether that would work. And, yeah, there's a lot of places that want a team. It just depends on what the NRL are trying to do. And I think the South Island would be the best position for a team. But, again, Christchurch would be that place. But, you know, unfortunately, yeah. things aren't going too great in Christchurch at the moment. Yes, Was as John said, you know, we're, we're fairly fickle with our crowds. Now, can, if I want, it's just this, for argument's sake, so as Owen Glenn puts up an, another franchise somewhere, can he afford to, to lose... Um, Three million, four million dollars a year, or, or whatever it is, for ten years before he gets gets some. Because not until you're successful, and we're only just starting to see the Warriors in the last four or five years be, become consistent in what they're doing. Um, and that took them 15, uh, 10, 10, 12 years to get yeah. to, to that point. You know, if, if he can, and he's probably got plenty of money to do it, to, to to lose. But if he wants to lose his money for a long period of time, then sure, we might have the financial resource to do it. John, the only, I interviewed the only model, the only model that would work is having a, a huge benefactor who's got a lot of money yep. and is pre prepared to spend a lot of money for a long while. And I think there's one other issue. I interviewed Gallup, and uh, you know, you can people don't necessarily answer all your questions, and you guys don't either at times. You know, it's one of the things when you're being interviewed. But he made it very clear that there are other priorities ahead of New, a second franchise in New Zealand, and he spoke particularly about Queensland. And I think of it as going to be an expansion. But the question I would ask is this, why expand? You've got a competition which is very even now. We just saw Cronulla beat Manly this week. Well, that's a great result for the competition. It's about your television, mate. It's about the audience and being able to present it to television stations, more product. That's what the television stations are wanting is more product because fans are screaming for it. Um, so they'd probably say less teams in Sydney yeah. and more teams elsewhere yeah. is better for television in terms of um, them looking at marketing the yeah, game. Shipping. To make it more of a national game as well. Because they're, they're really competing hard with AFL. AFL's on the move, AFL isn't it? AFL are pushing hard. When you, when you look at um, nurseries, New Zealand is a big nursery for rugby league and rugby union, as well as Queensland. The other areas aren't really producing too many right. young talent. Right. So to have another team here would sort of 
it wouldn't necessarily affect the Warriors, I don't think, straight up, but it'd certainly affect some of the clubs in Australia. This guy here, young Kiwi, living in Australia. Going to play yeah. for Queensland. <laughs> no, he says no. He's told, he's told Mel. He's told Mel he's, uh, he's New Zealand. He's going to be a Kiwi, yeah. isn't he? Uh, uh, yeah, he's playing. Yeah. He's already played junior Kiwis. Yeah. Um, and, 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 and Queensland Obviously Mel's gone to see him. Are you trying to pinch him, are you? <laughs> Obviously a very intelligent young man. He's and, seen uh, through you, Stevie. And he's told yeah. him, no, he's a, he's a Kiwi. Uh, so sorry, mate. Talent. You, very you exciting talent. Very exciting talent. There's a number of them coming through at the moment. Yeah. And it's great for rugby league. Well, let's talk about that number coming through in all sports because, you know, you hear the term that we've got a factory of league and rugby union players and we're talking about nurseries. Do both codes look after their players well or is there a model for this? Um, look, I think both codes do things differently. Um, I think there's some very good attributes I've seen in the NRL through what they've done with the Junior Warriors and the, that competition. Um, I, look, but rugby is still a nursery. Rugby's a great game in New Zealand. And look at all the talent that's come through already. Look yeah. at the 5'8s yeah, and halfbacks. Yeah, yeah. We've been saying we don't have any. Now, look at Bodine Barrett and, 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 and look at um, Kerr Barlow. Look at Aaron Smith. Um, you know, there's a lot of exciting young talent coming through in New Zealand rugby. So, you know, I don't think it's a matter of saying who does what better. They do it differently. Um, if leagues, if rugby's got an issue, I think it's the fact we've got too many professional players. Uh, that's caused a financial hardship. That's why Otago are in trouble. Otago's only one example. Most of the other provinces, or many of them, have the same financial concerns. Not maybe as bad, but a lot of it goes back. We've just been paying too many players to play the game of rugby. That's one of the attributes league has got. It does doesn't have that. In league in New Zealand, we've got one a professional team, the Warriors, and a semi-professional team, um, the Junior Warriors, who all work. And I think there's a model that we've got to get back to in rugby, uh, that people need to grow a work ethic as well as play the right. game. And we, are, we have relied on playing too many people for too long. That's why rugby's in trouble. But I think rugby does a great game, great job in growing its players. Yeah. We have tremendous talent. Look at the, the New Zealand Colts side, year in and year out, cleans up the world. So, you know, I don't think it's a point saying rugby doesn't do it well. Right. Rugby's got a different issue to league. Hugh... You've been involved in rugby as a coach, both up in Northland, and you're still coaching a, a team on uh, North Harbour, and your whole background w was in league. Then you had a son with a lot of talent, and you decided, obviously with a family discussion, that he was going to go to Melbourne Storm. What, what led to that decision? Uh, he, he played union for Westlake Boys, hadn't he? Uh, he, he started at Westlake, but then moved to uh, New Zealand Manova Secondary Grammar. Schools. Uh, Manova Grammar. He was at uh, with New Zealand Secondary Schools. Um, right. So he's a kind of product that in the old days would have been picked up and channeled into rugby. So why Melbourne Storm? What happened? Uh, he, he had the opportunity um, to go and train in the off season with uh, with the Melbourne Storm. Just out of the blue, it, it came, and um, he always wanted to do that. Um, I actually tried to get him at, at the Roosters, but uh, Freddie Fitler got got sacked, so I lost my contact there. We tried Penrith, no good. Um, and then the opportunity came up at, at Melbourne. He loved the work ethic at Melbourne. That's ju that's just the way he is. Um, right. uh, and that, that that came about. He he loved rugby. And he he still loves playing rugby. He's enjoying his, his time at rugby league. Um, but to answer your question, uh, yeah, rugby do do things well as far as development. Uh, but sometimes you have to be of a certain pedigree um, to be wanted by 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 a province. And Matt wasn't wanted within the uh, within the Auckland system. Um, there were other people ahead of him, uh, even though he was he'd already made New Zealand teams and was in the most successful. Um, first 15 team ever. Uh, so he was r the wrong pedigree. And so he made a decision to go to rugby league to better himself. Right. What he wants to do after that, and, it was, and I've got to say it was his decision, not mine. I, you know, right. I stay w out, out of most of the things, especially in that I don't want to be seen as a pushy parent. So it was his decision uh, to become a better player and he thought he'd be better at the smaller things that he needed to get better in by going to rugby league firstly. And he kicked the winning field goal for this Toyota Cup team at the weekend. Now, before we leave this topic, Harrell, who I think you know, he's an Auckland grammar old boy. Now, you know, mate, this used to be... <laughs> you'd never have ever have thought of anybody playing league from the Auckland grammar first 15. How did the Warriors pick him up? Yeah, I think like a number of other boys, you know, just like young Matt and a few other boys now, they see it as a career path where they can have a choice to play rugby league or rugby union. And, Particularly uh, centres in rugby union, 
Um, they, they go just as good in rugby league, a very similar sort of position, so it's not a big transition. Uh, he played for our 20s and did well, and, and all of a sudden he's into the first grade side. So, you know, he's still very green. He's learning a lot, and he's, he's had a big start to his NRL career. But, you know, he's not the only one. There's a number of, of young uh, first 15 players in New Zealand that are now in the NRL system, whether it's in the 20s or in a full-time squad. Um, there's a young young boy who's just gone over to the Roosters who played for Odahu first 15 as well as first 13 and he's in their full-time squad at the age of 18. So um, it's happening everywhere and right. scouts now are going to first 15 games, not just union scouts but league scouts. Yeah. And one, one thing that the, the rugby league have at the moment is that the under-20s is on the, the, the TV every second week. There's a profile for them. Yes, Rugby Union, they've got the first 15 on um, every Saturday through the Rugby Channel. Um, but these, what high profile other team does the, does the Rugby Union have to showcase the, the, the juniors? Nice. And so the, Good point. they, they, they Good see point. it every second week on TV and they aspire to that. If they did it with rugby, maybe they'll aspire to, to go there. Now, we've seen coaches in difficult situations before and we're seeing a bloke who many of us like a lot, who's in a very difficult situation because he's the coach of the national team and he's the coach of a club side which is playing poorly at the moment. So can Stephen Kearney do both jobs? John? Well, I'd say uh, anyone would have difficulty doing both jobs. I think um, the fact that the Kiwis only play one or two games a year means it's not such a big issue. Uh, I think Stephen would say you can't coach Origin and coach a club side. I'd agree with that um, because it's, it's really intense. Um, but um, unfortunately for Steve, you've got to get your first thing right, which is your uh, province, your uh, club, and that's where the pressure is. Um, so, I mean, I, I'd, I'm not sure that I'd want to be coaching both um, without having a lot of experience first. And, and Steve's just become a full-time, you know, a head coach. He wasn't a head coach before, so he's, he's taken two big head coaching roles on at once. Is he too heavily relying on somebody like Jared Hain? Oh, no, I mean, he's a key player in the team. He's unfortunately injured at the moment. When he did play against us, he was on fire and then yeah. pulled up short. Um, he's had a few injuries to some key players, and that's unfortunate. Uh, part of the NRL is that you've got to be able to deal with that. He probably hasn't got the, the depth that we've got, say, at the Warriors. Um, there was no issue with him being the coach of the Kiwis when he was assistant coach at Melbourne and the Kiwis won the World Cup. Uh, now, Parramatta aren't going as well, and yeah. in a couple of weeks, there's going to be an Anzac test and he's going to need to be away for at least 10 days from his Parramatta side who aren't going very well. And things don't look real good for them this season. So the fans at Parramatta aren't going to be happy. Um, Mal Meninga's a full-time coach for Queensland. Ricky Stewart's a full-time coach for Queensland. But Tim Sheens is a full-time coach for the Tigers as well as the Australian coach. And he achieves it and the Tigers aren't going too bad. So no one's really talking about it. The only time uh, this topic comes up is when he's losing. At the moment with Parramatta, he's losing. So the pressure comes on to him. Can he do the New Zealand job as well? If Parramatta were at, uh, at the top of the table at the moment, we wouldn't be having this discussion right. whatsoever. So he, he's under pressure from the Parramatta side of things. And, and like Steve said, he, he's only going to have a couple of games this year, but he's going to be at it at a time for the Anzac where his team is struggling. They're really, really struggling. And um, how he's going to bring them together, it's a, it's a hard road for the board. Do you remember the whole situation with Bluey McLennan? It's a bit of irony there, isn't it? They said that he couldn't do the job because he couldn't do both. Well, there was Graham Lowe who was a major yep. person Big behind that decision, in that, wasn't he? Uh, but, but he also suffered from the same thing. He wanted to go to Wigan back in 1986, 87, um, and still coach the Kiwis. Um, he was told he couldn't do it, so he got sacked. He wanted to do it, he got sacked. He went to Wigan, uh, and then they brought in another coach in, in 1987. So he's been on both both sides of it. So, but it's ironical that um, they, they come up with that. And whether or not they make any change and put Bluey in, what, do you think Bluey's going to give away the Warriors to take on New Zealand? Well, I'm asking you that. No, I don't think he would. Okay. I mean, why, why would he? Where so, do you rate them? Do you rate the? You see, you, you and I know where it is in, in, in rugby union. There's, there's the key job as the coach of the All Blacks. But I, I've heard this quite a bit with the Kiwis. It's perhaps not as prestigious as we all think. Oh, it's prestigious, but there's just not enough games for them to play. Yeah, yeah. They're it's only playing two or three. Yeah, yeah. 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 it's not a question of where it ranks. I mean, yeah. playing for your country would be the ultimate, but playing for your country, coaching a team that plays two games a year versus coaching all year round, it's a big difference. So. They're currently the World Cup champs, so it's not as a 
they don't see it as prestigious. Yeah, I mean, all yeah. the Kiwi blokes want Did to play Did you say for... we are the World Cup champs? No, I said they are. Oh, I thought you said we. I thought, <laughs> I thought we'd finally won you over. <laughs> he says we when he's talking about the Warriors. Yeah. Though. He's no, a, no, he, no. yeah. Of course. I had him I, I, I had he's him nearly on radio Kiwi. on uh, Sunday. He's nearly a Kiwi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 